Call of Duty was released in 2003, and wow, that's 13 years ago. Ironically, most of the kids playing Call of Duty now are about 13, but whatever. It was developed by a team called Infinity Ward, a team made of a bunch of guys that used to work for a team called 2015. Yeah, that's a pretty shitty name if you ask me. But under Shitty 15, they developed Medal of Honor Allied Assault for EA, and it was a huge success. And Allied Assault is still considered by most fans the best in the Medal of Honor series even today. They had a lot of great ideas they wanted to implement in future titles, but EA told them, no, fuck those ideas, and do what we want. Nobody wants to play a level where you have no weapons. That's just an example for you. So they left and created Infinity Ward, and they developed Call of Duty, and the level that you had to start as a Russian soldier with no weapons became the most memorable level in the whole fucking game. Just goes to show you EA doesn't know shit about what makes a good game. Call of Duty runs on the Quake 3 engine, the best engine of its time. But surprisingly, Call of Duty still hasn't moved on from the fucking engine. I mean, if it isn't broke, don't fix it, right? Or in this case, don't upgrade an engine while you can just tweak it over and over again for years. Okay, to be fair, not much of the Quake 3 engine is left nowadays. But even with all the revisions and tweaks that have been done over the years, somewhere inside, deep down, there is still a little bit of Quake 3 left. What's the plot, you ask? Well, it's World War II. I mean, seriously, do you need any more than that? Okay, you do play as three different characters throughout the game. But even after I completed the game, I don't even remember their names. And that's what's great about World War II games. Characters and story doesn't matter. Just complete your mission, and that's all. That's why I love the older games. The cutscenes were like briefings. I could skip it and not worry about, did I miss something important? The campaign is split into four sections, American, British, and Russian, and the last three levels are considered the allied missions, which you play as all three nationalities. Each campaign, you will be killing Nazis, whether that be charging their base, breaking into POW camps, or just taking back Mother Russia. If you played any World War II shooter before this, then you know what you're getting yourself into here. Don't be fooled by the name here, people. Yes, while it is a Call of Duty, and it is filled with scripted scenes to give the game a more cinematic flair up the wazoo, and playing it now, you can feel the modern Call of Duty hiding inside the darkest part of its ass. But this game doesn't play like your typical modern Call of Duty. The original Call of Duty actually feels like a game instead of an interactive movie where you control a health regenerating mutant who only lives to go on murderous rampages of people of different colored skins and nationality. You're not a superhero. You're just another helpless soul fighting an evil force trying to defend the world. This actually tries to be a military type game. Not realistic like Arma but making sure the environments, weapons, sounds, and feel of everything is realistic. D42 and use it. Go, go, go! It's weird thinking about Call of Duty without getting an ugly taste in your mouth, but playing this Call of Duty is a breath of fresh air. All the weapons here are standard here for World War II and are all modeled with great detail. If I have to give you any tip, just pick up the first MP40 you see here. 
because it's powerful and the enemies drop them all the time. It's better to have unlimited ammo than keeping your starting weapon and having it go bone dry within a couple minutes. Call of Duty wasn't revolutionary for its time, but it did try to differ itself from other shooters. Instead of being a lone wolf character, you are constantly surrounded by your fellow soldiers. And from what I've seen, these guys can be extremely useful at killing Nazis. Shit, some of these companions run and gun like it's a modern Call of Duty. Another difference was the use of iron sights. It wasn't the first to do this, but it was still fairly uncommon at the time to see this in games that it felt like it was the first time you ever saw it. There is no running and gunning in this game, for the most part. The gameplay just doesn't lend itself to it. You try that, you won't get far. Sure, in some areas it may work, but in other areas, you will be gunned down faster than Ricky was in the alley with the shotgun. Believe me, don't do it, especially on the highest difficulty. You have to slow your roll and take on each encounter cautiously, which for me, this is the game's strength. Don't get me wrong, I like fast shooters where you just kill, 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 like Doom and Quake, but for a military shooter, it just doesn't feel right. So I like how this Call of Duty plays. It's refreshing to go back and play games where you don't regenerate health. Yes, there are med kits, and for people who never played a shooter until Halo 2, shooters used to have med kits. It made the game much more challenging and fun instead of just having to wait to regenerate. It forces you not to play like a complete jackass. Because when you have low health and there's still a lot of Nazis in your sight raining down fire at you, it creates a lot of tension. Which is what I instantly fell in love with this game when I started to play it. Every hit I took gave me a sense of real impact because I was actually damaged. I couldn't just go run and regenerate somewhere like a fucking coward. I had to keep pushing forward, taking out Nazis and hopefully finding a fucking medkit. <laughs> the difficulty is well balanced. If you play using your brain and skills, you will have no problem for the most part. But if you just want to play like a fucking cunt, then you're going to get fucked like one. But make no mistake, at times this game can be punishing. If you get caught not paying attention to your surroundings, you will get pumped full of lead. Especially at the highest difficulties, believe me on that. The highest difficulty is no joke, it demands your attention. Level design may be bland for a shooter, but for a World War II shooter trying to be somewhat realistic, it works perfectly. Sure, it's no abstract design like Doom or Quake, but Infinity Ward wasn't going for that anyways. It's a blast to gun your way through a POW camp and escape in just a few minutes, destroy anti-air guns at a dam, disguising as a Nazi to sneak aboard a battleship, charging at Nazis with only a handful of ammo, watching all your comrades getting blown to smithereens. It's highly enjoyable. My favorite level is when you get to break into a Nazi mansion to rescue Captain Price. But if I had to point out something I hate, it's the fucking level with the vehicles in it. I don't like sitting shotgun on a vehicle doing drive-bys because it's boring. Most of your shots won't even connect. This is where it felt like a modern Call of Duty. Just watching the game go by without me. And the fucking tank levels. I hate being forced to drive any kind of vehicles in a shooter. Like those fucking vehicles in Gears of War 1 and 2. I hate driving tanks. It's slow, sluggish, and it's just boring. It's as boring as the tank levels in World at War. And there's two of these tank stages back to back, but I guess I should be grateful that they're not that long. <laughs> Graphics were definitely not anything special when it was released, but back in the day, gameplay mattered more than just fancy graphics, so no one really cared. And when it came to World War II shooters, they didn't get much better looking than this. Personally, looking at the game now, it looks quite good still with great texture detail. You can see Infinity Ward put 
everything they had to make the world look and feel believable. I never felt I was playing an old, outdated first person shooter. Maybe that's because it actually felt better than most modern shooters, which is actually quite fucking sad. I'll play this over Black Ops 3 any day. The animations when characters get shot are quite good. It's great being on the battlefield and seeing all your allies and enemies stay in cover and fighting logically and seeing some get blown away by grenades is just great. It's really immersive. But of course I have to mention the sound because wow, it, you know, it's freaking awesome. Why is it that most of the modern shooters make all their weapons sound like fucking airsoft guns? Here, every weapon, every explosion has a huge punch to it. It's so rewarding. On the battlefield, there's never a quiet moment. You can always hear gunfire in the distance, planes flying overhead, mortars dropping down, and explosions going off everywhere. Meanwhile, hearing shouting and screaming, it's, it's crazy. H hearing a tank moving towards your position is scary as it should be. That sound of metal is just fucking wicked. Everything about this game just sucks you into the environment. I never felt safe during this game. You can be killed at any moment, which is believable for World War II. I have to tip my hat at Infinity Ward for doing such a good job nailing down all the details. Call of Duty was a great World War II first person shooter back in its day and I'm glad to see that it still is and it's aged quite well. The graphics, the art and definitely the sound all still hold up here. There's no reason not to pick the game up today. Playing later entries in the series and going back to this really makes you appreciate how this game was developed. Black Ops 3 was a terrible experience and boring as fuck. I would not recommend getting that game. But I would definitely recommend getting this one. But if you do, get the PC version. Not the crappy console port which is on 360 or PS3. That's garbage. But sadly, Activision is still charging $20 on Steam for this game. And if it ever goes on sale, it's never lower than $9.99. Like seriously, Activision, you greedy some bitch. So I recommend getting the War Chest when it's on sale, $14. In the War Chest, you get Call of Duty, the expansion and Call of Duty 2. So you really can't go wrong here with that. So go pick up Call of Duty. It's still a fun game. And what's crazy, there are still people playing the multiplayer. Yes, I tried it. It works and it's fun. That's what's great about PC gaming. A game can be old, but people will still be playing the multiplayer for years to come. It's amazing. So put down those modern garbage games like Call of Duty and go play something worth your time like Call of Duty.